Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video I wanted to, to take a look at an amazing educational game that you might be interested in. This is a game called Algotica Iteration 1, with a very unusual menu that basically just has settings on the bottom, and then two options, 1 and a 0. Now, this game is um, one of those games that tries to teach you coding and programming skills through essentially gameplay, and today I'm gonna show you what this game is all about and why I think it's actually kinda cool. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So, let's click on one and discover the world of Algorica. Now, in this game, you're playing as a little uh, robot creature by the name of Loni. This is you right here. Um, you don't actually start this way. I did pick up a little helmet here to make me look a little bit different. But um, expect the game to basically be this in a nutshell. Now, how does this work? Well, everything here has to be done through commands. Um, and everything here is done through a specific uh, programming language developed uh, for this game. Very, very simple in a sense. Um, you can kind of learn some of the syntax behind it by going into manual here and looking at the commands. And as you can see, um, so the, that's the commands I currently have. A lot of them are still locked to me. I haven't discovered them. And the game basically teaches you these commands as you progress through various levels. There's also various mechanics in this game. Um, I currently only have one, which is the scanner, which I'll show you in a second. But there's a lot of them that I still haven't unlocked and haven't discovered. Scanner does this. Basically shows you what things are around here, including a uh, data list. Makes it easier to type in commands. Interesting. I wonder how. Anyway, um, so to start, I basically need to figure out what I'm going to do here. And I need to reach this location right here. I basically need to jump onto here. Unfortunately, this is still locked. To unlock this, I have to pick up all of these data cubes that you see glowing right here. And so in other words, I need to now figure out how exactly am I going to do this in as few commands as possible. I only have four commands available to me. And I need to figure this out. So first of all, this is actually a puzzle game that does get progressively more difficult. But second of all, it's a coding game that teaches you how coding and programming works. So let's try this. Let's uh, basically type uh, forward first and see what this does. Obviously, this will lead us forward and we'll just fall down. Okay, we've unlocked a new hotkey. Hold control button. The control button will now allow me to add some of these blocks without typing them. So here, control B is backward, control F is forward. These are left and right. Um, so this is kind of a shortcut to make uh, things easier so that I don't have to type them uh, later. But forward was a wrong choice here. We're going to start with backward. Start with backward first. We're going to go here. Then when here, we need to turn left and go straight. So turn left and then go straight and then we need to jump the last one will be jump so let's see where this takes us run okay good not good very not good okay so this is going to be a lot more challenging than i thought so okay can we do something else here this will clearly not work because i'm going to i only have one command left and i guess here I could turn right, but that's not gonna really do anything because I cannot add anymore and this will not allow me to pick up all of the blocks. Yeah, as you can see, this kind of fails. All right, let's change this a little bit. Let's see if I can maybe, just maybe, go the other way, go around here and pick, the, uh, pick up these blocks as we go. So, how do we do it? Let's try it. So forward, turn left, forward, jump, we'll do this. It will make us approach this. We'll jump over it. And maybe, just maybe, like a pro, we'll be able to finish this level. I don't know. Let's see. It looks like this is it. Yep. Excellent. We've managed to achieve this saving um, one little memory cell, which gave us a little bit more points. So-called pointless points. 
Lonnie, is it you? Yes, and you're not alone. You're, uh, you've are you done it then. The player will help us, won't he? So, the cool thing about this game is that it breaks the so-called fourth wall, fourth dimension. It kind of starts interacting to you as a person, you as a player, as you play into the game. Several games have done this. Um, one recent one that was very, very big was called One Shot, where you actually even got to interact with your own computer at some point. Uh, but here, the cool thing is that it does it really passively, but slowly becomes more and more important. Um, I haven't really got to that point yet, but I've read about this game and people are saying it's, it actually gets really, really cool. Now, this game is an indie game and it's actually made by one person. So for one person work, this is absolutely incredible. Anyway, so this person is talking to us. We're going to skip this conversation for now because I don't want to spoil the story for you. I think it's worth playing through it yourself. Uh, now, so this time we need to reach this, this point. We do have some parts here that will help us, including these portals. And um, we do need to collect these blue um, data cubes on the way. But the cool thing about this game is that it actually gets relatively difficult relatively fast. So right now, if I just type forward, there's nothing stopping me anymore. So I need to do something else. I actually need to figure out how I'm going to approach this hall. So I think I might, might actually have to turn right here first. We're going to turn right and then go forward. This will land us here. We're then going to turn left. We're going to... Go forward again, turn left again, go forward again, and then this will teleport us through the portal, and then we'll see what happens. Let's see if this is actually going to work. So, pick up the first cube, pick up the second cube, pick up the third cube, pick up the star, and it's a new command called activate. All right, excellent. Let's let's see what this does actually. Um, activate activates the events on which the Loni stands. So this is a new game mechanic that was just introduced. We need to figure out what it does. So let's maybe uh, put an activate command right after we reach um, this thing and see what happens. Let's see what this does. And so here we go, we're going to go forward, and this will get activated right here, and it says nothing to activate. And unfortunately, I don't think we actually discovered enough for us to be able to use this command just yet, because what's interesting about this game is that it's not actually linear. There are, there are different pathways you can follow, and if I show you the map, I follow straight, and this is where I discovered the activate command, but there were actually two other choices, and um, in, in those two other choices, maybe there is something else I need to unlock before I can use this command. So in this sense, this is actually a very unique puzzle game, but also a very unique programming educational game because it doesn't teach you everything right away. It does actually take a while to unlock everything. Anyway, so let's actually come up with the answer for this puzzle first. All right, so I kind of changed things a little bit. This time I'm gonna actually turn left and go backwards. And let's see if this actually works. This is my first time trying this command. It's thinking a little bit backwards. In other words, it involves a little bit more creativity here, but I did save one memory cell and we'll see if this gives us extra points. Now, um, I'll show you what extra points are for. I don't think they're actually that useful yet, but at some point in the game, you will unlock um, new game mechanics that will allow you to use those points. And the last one, sweet, I think I did it. I think this is it. Yes, all right, point with points plus 15. And we've uncovered a chest. Interesting. Okay, that's perfect. So I think uh, inside this chance, there's probably some sort of a reward for this particular level, but um, so yeah, you do acquire all of these uh, memory points and extension monoliths, point with points. All of this will come into play later on. In the beginning, you just collect them for no apparent reason. Um, but what I really enjoy about this game is that it's, it's sort of a, a big mystery. As you play through it, you discover new things, but at first, it, none of it makes sense. So you have to actually be very patient with this game in the beginning. And it, it is uh, somewhat challenging right, uh, right from like maybe the fifth or the sixth level, where you'll actually have to really, really start thinking. But anyway, let's scan this level. And let's see, uh, let's see what, what we have here. This is a node runs next command. Um, and I think uh, basically we have to use the activate command right here. So this is probably what this activate command is for. We're going to move here, activate this. And then we're going to go back, I guess, and collect this thing. And here we go. Activate. Okay, this is, uh, this is 
Another cube we need to pick up later on. And that's just not enough. Okay, so let's try this one more time. Oh, and it looks like when I press this button, it actually activates the bridge that opens to this final gateway. So we need to go this way, actually. So we're going to try this again. Go straight, activate. And so this time I actually used up all of the memory cells, but let's see if this actually solves the puzzle. I'm sure there's an easier way to do it, but I'm just going to see if I can solve it at all. So here we go. It's going to go up there. It's going to now activate the bridge, turn and follow the bridge to the exit. Perfect. Looks like this finished this level. And we reached the next level with more puzzling. But anyway, that's essentially how this game works in a nutshell. And uh, honestly, for a one person team, uh, I mean, consider this is actually made by one person. This is absolutely incredible. It's also not very expensive. It's um, actually very, very cheap. So do consider getting it. And on the other hand, uh, what I really enjoy about this is how well, it's one of those games you can kind of, you know, come in, play for a few minutes, try to finish a level, and come back to it later on. And so, it is educational, it does teach you a bit of coding, but unfortunately it doesn't teach you any advanced coding, at least um, until way, way later on. And even then, it's really more of a puzzle than, than it is um, a game that teaches you programming. Um, but on the other hand... One main disadvantage, or I guess one main complaint about this game is that it does involve a little bit of typing. So here you have to actually type quite a lot. Uh, but, however, at some point it does introduce those little shortcuts that you can use. So here I can actually just press Control R to include a write command now. Meaning that I will now be able to uh, just easily add these blocks with different control commands. So in that sense it's actually kind of cool. This was actually yet another choice of levels, uh, so I think there's another branch that I just reached. Um, or possibly not. I mean, actually, I'm not, I'm not sure what the other uh, entrance was, because there were two crosses there. It looks like I may actually be able to go back here and see if, what the other one does. So let's try to reach the other exit and see if it takes us to a completely different level. So here I just have to basically type forward left, and it will do this for me automatically. And... Is this a different level or no? Oh, look at that. It's a completely different level. Floating Mountains 14. Interesting. So yeah, that was a completely different branch that wasn't even shown here. So it looks like this is actually a completely secret level. And um, But anyway, so yeah, there's a lot of branches here. There's a lot of things you can go back to and accomplish, um, especially if you're stuck somewhere. A lot of so-called uh, crossroads. And all in all, this game is actually super, super fun. And so just to summarize this, so yeah, for... A puzzle game, this is awesome. For an educational game, this is actually really, really cool. But for a game where you actually want to learn advanced programming, maybe not so much. This will clearly not uh, turn you into an amazing programmer, but it will definitely be enjoyable for you to play with maybe your children or to um, play with your students if you're a teacher. It does actually provide quite a lot of content, quite a lot of storyline, a huge, huge amount of things to go through and will take you a few hours to finish, but um, I definitely think this is not a game for everyone. Anyone who enjoys puzzles, definitely this is a must-have. Anyone who enjoys pr uh, those games that break the fourth wall, um, where it tries to talk to you as an actual person, as a player, and it tries to introduce these elements that other games don't have, uh, this is definitely a game for you as well. But if you're into actual programming games, or if you actually want to become a better coder and you want to challenge yourself with coding, maybe this is not the best title to get because this is definitely for beginners and more so for, you know, younger um, generation of players. Anyway, so that's uh, Algorica Iteration 1 in a nutshell. Check it out. The link for this game is in the description below and do support the developer who managed to create all this entirely by himself. Very, very impressive. I mean, this is actually absolutely impressive. Anyway. I'll see you guys in the next video. Come back here tomorrow to learn something else and maybe to learn about another video game that you didn't know about before. And I'll see you in the next video. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And let's actually go back into the main menu here and click on this zero here because I really wonder what it does. Huh.